Hello again. Welcome for another session of uh, Surgical Pathology Sign-Out Digital Slide Review. Uh, I'm Dr. Lewis Hostel, and our time today is uh, courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Our case today comes again from the realm of ovarian pathology. This is uh, the case of a 24-year-old woman who uh, has recently been uh, diagnosed with lutz jaeger's syndrome. She, because of this uh, diagnosis, is aware of the risk of ovarian neoplasia and uh, opts to have uh, uh, exploratory laparotomy and resection. On resection, the ovaries are just slightly enlarged, um, but otherwise uh, don't appear particularly remarkable. Uh, this ovary was removed, and as you can see, we have several cystic structures, uh, not a lot of ovarian parenchyma. And so we'll just take a look and see what we've got here. Uh, this looks as though we have here some normal ovarian uh, parenchyma. We have some uh, germ cells here, uh, normal stroma, uh, developing follicle cyst, and uh, no particular neoplasia in that section. Other sections show here a little bit of a, an abnormal uh, phenomenon with uh, this uh, busy area here, uh, but have a, on closer inspection, it appears to be this is primarily a histiocytic response uh, with some cholesterol class giant cells and, uh, and sort of fat or lipid-like uh, substance, not a particular neoplasia. Whether this is the remnant of uh, a tumor or something uh, remains to be seen. Uh, adjacent here, she has another uh, cystic structure, uh, perhaps a uh, burned out follicle. Uh, another uh, follicular structure here, normal stroma. So we come to this uh, portion of her uh, ovary and we see that uh, uh, the slides have been nicely marked to uh, highlight this particular area here, which shows uh, a little bit of a interesting architecture, a nested pattern uh, with uh, concentrated nuclei surrounding uh, these eosinophilic bodies. And we'll take a high magnification view of one of these. As you see, the nuclei appear relatively bland. There's abundant uh, pink, slightly granular cytoplasm and then we have these uh, very densely eosinophilic, hyaline-looking uh, tubule-like structures uh, that do not appear to be associated with uh, uh, vessels uh, and have a bit of uh, nuclear uh, orientation around them. So this is the pattern of a sex cord tumor with annular tubules, these hyaline eosinophilic bodies, uh, the uh, annular tubules. Uh, the tumor, the cells are uh, sex cord-like cells uh, and can be mistaken for a granulosa cell tumor or uh, Sertoli cell tumors. Uh, however, the presence of these uh, very hyaline eosinophilic bodies uh, is uh, diagnostic. Uh, of course, it does need to be uh, differentiated from the uh, granulosa cell tumor uh, patterns with call Exner bodies, uh, which it somewhat resembles, uh, but the surrounding cells are quite different uh, from those seen in granulosa cell tumor. So usually that is not a big problem. So the diagnosis of sex cord tumor with annular tubules is an unusual diagnosis. Uh, not infrequently, these patients present with a hormonally active uh, state of uh, increased estrogen uh, secretion uh, that may or may not result in menstrual difficulties uh, or premature uh, feminization, uh, particularly since this is a genetic uh, uh, disorder um, that uh, is associated with a particular uh, mutation associated with a STAC uh, uh, gene. Uh, it can be uh, <clears throat> seen as a potential uh, early childhood presentation. Uh, about one-third of the cases of this tumor are present in the 
setting of Poitier syndrome, uh, which, as you'll recall, uh, is characterized by these ovarian sex cord tumors, which are often bilateral, and in this case, that was the case, uh, as well as mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation and distinctive GI polyps. Uh, less frequently, these patients will develop GI malignancies uh, in a minority of patients. Now, the non Putzjagers patients may also uh, have hyperestrogenism and so forth, uh, but they are, their tumors are usually a bit more bulky and may be associated with other uh, stromal tumors such as uh, granulosa cell tumor. Uh, we'll look at one such uh, gross example here in this next slide, uh, courtesy of the uh, old AFIP fascicles, Drs. Young and Scully. Um, as you can see, this has the appearance of a, uh, a, a fleshy tumor, uh, mostly solid, uh, but a very friable type of parenchyma uh, with areas of hemorrhage and so forth that could be associated with a carcinoma or uh, a uh, hormone-secreting tumor that's not particularly uh, colored in a distinctive way, uh, but has the appearance of a uh, very cellular uh, and not much stroma type of uh, tumor. Uh, for comparison, I thought it would be worthwhile to just uh, highlight the gastrointestinal uh, manifestations of this uh, entity, Poitier syndrome. Uh, the gastrointestinal polyps are somewhat distinctive. They tend to be hamartomatous, uh, not having dysplasia, and they tend to have a sort of arborizing uh, structure. Uh, the difficult feature with them is that, of course, uh, the uh, polyps do not have a distinctive epithelium, but rather present with the epithelium native to the site in which they originate. Uh, so since they can be seen in the stomach, uh, in the small bowel, and in the colon, the epithelial component of these polyps can be uh, distinct and different depending on the location of level of the bowel that you're present. So here we see a very uh, bland, mucinous uh, type of uh, epithelium, more kind of foveolar type cells. Uh, no other associated uh, epithelium in terms of uh, gastric or uh, other origin. Uh, but this uh, was the lesion uh, arising in the stomach with a marked overgrowth uh, in a hamartomatous pattern of uh, gastric uh, foveolar type of epithelium. So this should not be termed a, a hyperplastic polyp, but rather should be recognized as a foveolar, excuse me, as a uh, Putz-Jaeger's uh, polyp uh, in a patient with uh, that syndrome. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is a sex cord tumor with annular tubules uh, rising in association with a patient with Putz-Jaeger's syndrome. Um, and uh, the prognosis in this circumstance uh, should be excellent. Um, so a bright rainbow for this patient. Thank you for uh, being with me and uh, sharing this uh, distinctive case of sex core tumor with annual tu annular tubules. We look forward to seeing you again on another uh, session of uh, digital pathology sign out.